So you might have noticed that Adobe just came out with a new major, major Photoshop update, bringing things like generative fill, some uh, remove tools, and some really cool updates on the gradients. They are now in the full version of Photoshop 2024, which is this year's major update for next year. Anyways, let's get into the video and let's go over some of them. Will Simpson here and welcome back to another video. It is always great to see you. I know you wanna see some Photoshop awesomeness, so let's just dive right into the video and get started. Now, the first thing that you are going to wanna make sure is that your Adobe Photoshop is fully updated to 2024. If you go to your Creative Cloud, which is this here, up here on the right, you see the little cloud button, go to your updates. You'll notice that Photoshop now says version 25.0. This is important, make sure your, your version says that. If you don't have this, go to check for updates, click this button, and it should pop up to, to update you to the newest version. If you're not sure which version you're on, uh, I'm using a Mac, so you can go to your applications and you can right click on it and go to get info and it'll pop up here and you'll see version 25.0. But once you have fully updated, you are good to go. So let's jump into Photoshop. So let's close this and you'll see when we first open Photoshop for the first time, it says new tools found. So these are new um, tools for your toolbar. So you have frame tool, triangle tool, remove tool, curvature pin, and object selection tool. Now you can create a new tool group and keep custom toolbar. If you have a custom toolbar, like you've designed your toolbar, you can reset the toolbar to the default toolbar and add these new tools, or you can just not add these tools. I only use the custom toolbar, so I'm just gonna say reset toolbar to default and add tools, because I didn't change anything. But if you have a custom toolbar and you wanna keep it that way, make sure you say keep custom toolbar and then you can add them as needed. So a couple of new features in this, and they are pretty, pretty major. And we're gonna start with the biggest one, the one that's created the most hype, and that is generative fill. Generative fill AI is no longer in the beta version of Photoshop, it is now in the full version of Photoshop. And some really, really good news. I've gotten this question a lot. The, it is now, Generative Fill is now commercially approved. Now, what does this mean? This means that all of the data and information that Adobe pulls to use Generative Fill is coming from their Adobe stock website, which means that there are licenses, that they have the licenses which allows you to use them for commercial usage. This is really, really important because that means that you can use Generative Fill and not have any threat of worry or of copyright or anything like that. This is per Adobe, so just make sure you check this all out, but from what I've learned and what I've seen, this is this is good to go. All right, so let's let's open it up and see what we're gonna do here. So let's, oh, let's take our first image here. Now, a couple of things first you're gonna notice. Let's go ahead and use the marquee tool and we're just going to simply add maybe a little bit of a, a lake or something. So we're gonna select this here and um, I updated Photoshop and when I opened it up, there was no generative fill and there was no updated gradient. So I had to work out some things. So I contacted Do Adobe and um, let's just put it this way. I went through the trouble of doing that so you didn't have to. Here's a nice screenshot of, uh, I was in the middle of trying to fix the issue, which really isn't an issue, it's just something that you just need to know and I actually figured it out myself, but this guy was like, hey, sorry, my shift's over. See ya, I'll connect you with another guy. So. Well done on the awesome customer service, Adobe. Anyways, let's say you update Adobe to the newest version, 2024. When you open it up, there's nothing there. There's no generative fill. There's no new gradients. So let me show you what to do. First, what you're gonna do is you're going to, I opened up this image. When you go to the gradients, we'll do this one first. When you go up here, you see classic gradient. If you click this and you use that one, you're gonna get the same old standard gradient that has been on Photoshop the entire time. Let's undo that. But click the gradient, click classic gradient, and then select gradient. Now, if you draw a gradient, you get the gradients, the new updated gradients. And that, that's how you get the new gradients. So that was fix number one. Notice how it's created on a whole new layer, everything. That's way better. But we'll get back into the gradients in a second. Let's get back to generative fill. So first thing you can do, when you press M on the keyboard for the marquee tool, let's say to make a selection right here, and 
your little toolbar, there should be a new toolbar that pops up, that should pop up right here, that allows you to do things. But if you go up to edit, go down to generative fill, click that, it's actually gonna pop up first and say, make sure you agree to the terms and services of using generative fill, which is fine. But then you get the option, the prompt to enter generative fill. So that's one way. The other way is, let's deselect that, go up to window, go down to your contextual tasks bar and make sure that that is turned on. Now, voila, there is this new task bar that is what I was looking for that allows you to kind of quick use things. So first things first, let's get into how this thing works. Well, this is based on what tool you have open. For example, I have the marquee tool, which is the selection tool, so I can easily press select subject and it'll select the subject. Then it gives me the option to generate a fill and it gives me some other options here that I can do. Let's deselect it. There's also remove background. So if I select that, well, look at this. I have a mask here. Let's turn that off and it completely removed the background, which is freaking awesome. Let's go ahead and undo that. Oops, wrong button. There we go. Undone. Okay, good. And you have a couple of other tools. Now, one of these, one of the issues with this toolbar is let's say you did a mask here or you did a selection here. That toolbar automatically pops up here, which is kind of annoying because let's say you're working on something underneath it and you want to be able to uh, adjust and see. Well, that just gets irritating. So what you can do is you can click on these three dots. You can hide the bar, which you saw how to find it. You go up to window and um, you do, you can just turn it off just like that. But I like it open. I like to have it. So you can then pin bar location and you can move it. So let's say click this little line here and you can move it to wherever you want. Let's put it off the screen and it'll, and it'll stay there. Now before the update, if you were to quit out of Photoshop and then open or beta and then open back up into Photoshop beta, it would then reset the toolbar and you would have to repin it. Now, from what I understand, let's try it. We're gonna quit out of this and reopen it. And from what I understand, once you reopen it, it should stay pinned to the same location. We're gonna test it out here today on this channel. <laughs> See if it's truth. Okay, good. Open up the same image that we were working on. And let's see if I make a selection here. There we go. Sweet, it pins it there. So that is very, very important. So let's say we wanted to add something. Let's say we wanted to add like a lake or something right here. So let's, let's select this and we're going to click generative fill and we're gonna type lake with reflection. So then another feature that has been added while we wait for this is tips. It gives you tips here, which allow you to kind of learn the tool a little bit better. So only select what you wanna change. Generating will completely change that certain area. And another tip, consider size. Size is important. For example, if you did a little box and you did like a boat, the boat is gonna fit into that box. But if it's not proportionate to the, the photo, then it's gonna be a small boat in that box. So make sure your selection that you're trying to generate is appropriate for the size that you want. Size matters. <laughs> All right, so let's look. This did terrible. That did awful. Let's, let's try something here. Let's, ew, okay. I have to say that is one of the worst generative fills that I've ever seen. All right, let's just do this. Let's do this. Let's create a generative fill water. All right, let's try this again. You can write a prompt in more than 100 different languages. That's important. If you speak 100 different languages, you're good to go. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So this is a little bit better. Um, some water. That's not bad. I mean, we can work with that. That's, it depends on what you're going for, but you, you see how it works. Now, one thing you notice, you can do larger thumbnails. So you have options here to make bigger thumbnails so you can kind of see better what they're doing. But that kind of shows you a little bit of the generative fill that you can pretty much go with whatever you want. All right, so now we are on an, the next image. And another feature that Adobe came out with is generative expand or AI expand. Real quick, before we go to the next tool, make sure you hit that like button because obviously these are, updates are amazing and you are liking them. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell. The bell is very important and it helps me out a lot. Thank you. Now let's get into the next tool. Now, one thing to note, 
still, and you're gonna probably, you've probably already asked this question, but the generative fill is still by 1024 by 1024. It is not anything bigger, nothing has changed there. So you are still creating blocks at 1024. So if you create something bigger than that, it takes that generative fill amount and it stretches it. So the resolution is going to be less. So just pay attention to that. I did a video, which I'll link at the end of this video on how to kind of work around that and make that work. Um, but let's show you this part here. So let's zoom out here. Go to the crop tool, press C on the keyboard, and we're just gonna make this, we wanna make this bigger, right? So we do this and we'll put him, no, that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to put him down there at the rule of thirds there. Perfect, and you'll notice here at the bottom in the crop tool, it says generative expand. Click that, what do you wanna put there? Well, we just wanna fill it in, so we'll let generative fill do its thing, and it goes about its thing. Now this is basically the same thing as doing a blank generative fill. I don't actually know why they, change this, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's just using the crop tool to expand. I don't know, you, you try both, see which one works better. But take a look at this. I mean, it does a great job, but I want you to look at this. So you see down here, oh, you can't see that, okay. But if you scroll down, scroll in here, you'll notice that the resolution is not as clear. It still looks great and honestly would be fine, but it's just a little bit fuzzier, a little bit blurrier. So that is um, one thing to note on the generative fill when you're expanding things like that. All right, so let's go ahead into the next photo and we're gonna show you the remove tool. Now this is a really cool tool. So right here at the spot healing brush, if you right click on it, you'll now see that there is a remove tool. If you click this, this gives you a brush. Now it says use this tool like a brush or a lasso, brush over the circle around to remove it. So you can do two different things here. Uh, let's go ahead and brush over. Let's just say we want to remove this. We can brush over this, right? And just kind of paint that and see what it does, right? And then we, then it removes it and let's see how it does. This is pretty good. It works fairly well. So yeah, so not too bad, but now we're going to just brush here and just kind of do the touch ups and we'll just do this piece by piece until it removes. Now you can kind of play it around, use a different uh, a combination of the stamp tool and the remove tool and the spot healing tool to really get it good. But honestly, that worked pretty damn good. And it's fast and it's good. I like it. Um, that didn't work. So we're gonna undo all that. Now the other thing you can do is you can draw around it. So first you just do this, right? And it automatically guesses smartly what you're trying to remove. So this did a great job and let's see if this does a better job. And actually it did a much better job doing that. So you can try the different methods there and see which one works best for you. Now another way, a little kind of a different uh, undestructive way. So what you can do is you can create a new layer, right? Make sure up here is sample all layers, right? And then create your selection using that new layer and it'll remove it using the bottom layer, but now you're using it on a layer so it's non-destructive. So that means if you need to make tweaks or adjustments, you can do that. See, that's gone, but if I turn this off, it's still there. So this gives you a, a little bit more customization and a, ability to fix the issues if you come up to. Okay, now that was the remove tool. So let's go back to this other photo here and let's work on the, uh, the gradient tool. So as I showed you in the beginning, if you click the gradient tool, it's also uh, G on the keyboard. Go up here and make sure gradient is selected, not classic gradient. So we're gonna select this and we're gonna create the radial one here, not the linear. This is linear, this is radial. And then what we'll do is we're just gonna create like a little bit of a sun flare. Okay, so we'll go down here to the oranges, click red and orange, and then we're going to draw this just like that. And you'll notice if you click on this, it is now completely editable. So you can click this circle here and you can move it, which you couldn't do before. This is so much better and it doesn't cut off at the end of the screen. You can adjust the, the size. You can rotate it by clicking this here. You can make it bigger. You can adjust the feather by clicking this one here. It is so much more customizable. So we'll do this. We'll make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna slide this where kind of the sun would be. We're gonna go down here to soft light, right? Actually, we'll, let's put this right here. And we're gonna lower the opacity and boom. So here's the before. Here's the after. Just adds that little warmth, that little flair. So that's just a few adjustments, but the gradient tools are so much more um, 
so much more customizable, which makes it a lot easier to use them. And it's just, this update is fantastic. And that's a basic overview. So I know you like these, so hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that bell because it is very important to YouTube. It says, hey, this video is important that they wanna see notifications from this person. Helps me out a lot. I greatly appreciate it. I thank you, thank you. Uh, comment which tool you like the most. And if you have any questions other than that, let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.